I shall wear a crown. Crown. I shall wear a crown. Well, when it's all over. Well, when it's all over. I shall see. said I'm the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live again and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die I know my redeemer liveth he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth with mine eyes I shall behold and not another we brought the have taken the way. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. For the mountains were brought forth forever. Thou hast formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past. And as a watch of the night, thou carries them away as with the flood. They are like sleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourish and groweth up. I'm gonna put In the evening it is cut down I'm and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger. By thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. All our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know my Redeemer liveth. And in the latter day I shall. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
I need the believers praying in the house. I need the believers praying in the house. I need the saints of God giving God praise. Listen, let's just not stare at them. Let's give God praise all over the house. Let the choir sing. Help the choir sing. Everybody all over this room. Hallelujah. How I made it through the rough times How I made it through the hard times I'm gonna Yeah, yeah I'm gonna tell the story I made it, I made it I made it over Yeah, I'm gonna tell We didn't come to spectate today. We came to celebrate. So while we're waiting for the closing, I want the prayers of the righteous just to start going on in prayer and praise. There need to be strength in this house right now. So right where you are, begin to clap your hands and begin to pray and begin to praise. This family needs you right now. If you made it through the snow, you ought to be grateful that God kept you covered and his traveling mercies. But right now, we need the people of God. We need the redeemed of God. We need the people of God just to give God praise. This family needs this strength right now. This church needs the strength right now. This pastor, this husband needs strength right now. Come on, people of God. They didn't, we didn't come to look. We came to participate. Let the redeemed of the Lord.
Come on, the husband is, come on, the husband is praising. The husband is praising. Come on, come on. Come on, let him not do it. If he can give glory to God, so can we. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There is strength in praise. There is strength in praise. Somebody say to God be the glory. 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 No more sickness. To God be the glory. No more lupus. To God be the glory. No more hospitals. To God be the glory. No more hospital beds. To God be the glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory! We're gonna move, we're gonna move on a swift train today. But somebody open up your mouth and give our God glory! Woo. There shall be glory after this. I just heard the Holy Ghost. There will be glory after this. There will be glory after this. And put a deposit on the glory right now. Hey there. There will be glory. Woo. Somebody point to the family and say, family, there will be glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise is the order of the day. And I know we're on a time frame. But listen, praise is the order of the day. Because is this family going to make it? The prayers of the righteous and the praises of God's people is not just going to get us through today. But it's going to get them through the rest of their lives can we do this all over the room let's celebrate the life of first lady Shamika Wormley come on people of God let applaud her life a queen to the Wormley family the first lady of the Liberty Church the mother of these children the daughters of this mother the sister of her come on let's celebrate her come on celebrate you Lady Wormley God has taken you from a place of some more to a place of no more you have left earth's temporal for heaven's eternal you will be missed but you're certainly not missing because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord so tonight, today, this morning we celebrate 
and we honor and it is my task to navigate us through these brief moments and we're not going to add any grief extra grief to this family amen but we're going to celebrate in the spirit of the lord as best as we can as we celebrate the life of lady wormley pastor wormley we're here to support you today even in the snowstorm in person and even streaming live we are here because love is what love does we love lady wormley and so we're going to do this as best as we can and there is a praise in the house and we're going to get off that praise momentarily as the lord shall guide us old testament scriptures now it's pastor kevin white in the house pastor white are you here amen pastor vincent rouse is going to come amen with our old testament reading followed by new testament scripture i'll come back to to that and followed by the prayer reverend lady natasha rouse will come with our prayer old testament reading new testament reading and our prayer in that order and the people of god said amen and the spirit of praise in memory of lady Werman, let's go to the 34th psalm i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make her boast in the lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears they looked unto him and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord, thank you Lord, and camped around them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Anybody know he's good today? Blessed is the man that trusts in him down to verse number 18 the lord is nigh pastor wormley to them who are of a broken heart and saveth such of a contrite spirit many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord but the lord shall deliver out of them all we celebrate lady wormley's deliverance today in jesus name the old testament scripture may you find comfort in these words in your time of bereavement New Testament reading comes from Paul's writing in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 6. For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. Listen here. I fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not only to me, but unto all them also that love his appearing the word of the lord is blessed and we are blessed because of the word of the lord with every heart praying god of our weary years god of our silent tears Thou who has brought us along the way. We thank you to the God of mercy. And we give honor this morning to the God of grace. We pray this morning, Father, that you would hear our prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus for this family. In Jesus' name. We pray, God, that you have always been our dwelling place. And even now, Father, we're asking, God, that you stretch out your hand again in the name of the Lord Jesus. We want to thank you, Father, for how you've already blessed this family. We thank you for the jewel of Shamika Wormley that you've given over to them. And we thank you, God, for giving them strength to be able to care for her. But, Father, we thank you today for victory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for how you've given my sister victory in the the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you, God, that when we look to the hill from with coming our help, we found your help in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that my sister was never alone, but that you were always right there with her. Thank you, God, for being her help. Glory to God. And today, God, I ask you that you be the family's help in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be the help that you promised to the Liberty Baptist Church. Be the help. Glory to God that the community shall need be the help to everything that Shamika put her hands to. Father, I thank you this morning, glory to God, uh, that we don't have to look for her because we already know where she is. Uh, she's in the hands of a capable God uh, who took good care of her on earth uh, 
family. Uh, Father, I ask now in Jesus' name uh, that as you take good care of her in heaven, uh, take care of her babies on the earth. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, send them help. Uh, send them mentors. Uh, send them what they need as young women uh, to do what no other power can do in them. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, I thank you, God, uh, for developing them uh, to be the women of God uh, that Shamika would be proud of. Uh, Touch him now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for being his strength. I thank you for being his hope. I thank you for being his focus. I thank you for being the love that he needed to be able to give more love and more love and more love. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that he shall not lack no good thing. Whatever he needs, Father, I pray that you grant it to him. In the name of the Lord Jesus, bless the a whole. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray today, God, that you will pull them together even the more in Jesus' name. Unify every heart. Pull them closer to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and just as my sister had a worship in her heart, I pray that the family, because family of worshipers, in the name of the Lord Jesus, give them a praise, even in this. Give them a praise, even in this. Give them to you even in this because God we do believe that you don't make a mistake you knew exactly what you were doing and I pray today that they shall see the glory they shall see the glory they shall experience the glory be their covering be their covering glory be their covering and they shall experience the glory of the most high God as they go to and fro be the fire that they need to keep them going in the name of the Lord Jesus and God we promise even in this we promise even through this we promise as we navigate through this to give your name the glory to give your name the praise and to give your name the honor because in this we are still with us Shamika one death where is your sting we got the she won over lupus she won over disease and now while we're in the earth we plan to win in the name of the Lord Jesus and so God we thank you we thank you for being a keeper because even in this we believe God he control your mind see and I decree and declare as I close this time of prayer that all is well. He kosha, he kandiniosa, even in my father's house. He call ya liberty, all is well. <laughs> even in my brother's house. <laughs> Let's look, keep the best show. All is well. <laughs> even with the family, <laughs> I come to declare <laughs> all is well. <laughs> Wherever God shall lead you, <laughs> I come to testify. <laughs> so and so shall it be my sister i love you go on and do what god has called you to do in jesus name If you believe all is well, go ahead and go for it. If you believe all is well, open up your mouth.
Amen. We applaud this music ministry for leading us knowing that the battle is over. When the battle is over, we're going home. Again, let me let me provide some housekeeping tips. We're going to ask a number one that all cell phones are on vibrate. Also, we want to make sure that everyone keep on your mask. Amen. And as we celebrate uh, Lady Wormley on today, let me pause again to honor and celebrate all of the preachers of the gospel. Amen. All of the first ladies, uh, everybody, all family and friends from everywhere. We thank God that your love showed up on today. Amen. At this time, at this time, real quickly. Amen. Joe Clark will say expeditiously. Amen. We're going to call for remarks. Hear me. It is Saturday. The weather is bad. And we need to get out of here. Amen. And um, unless you brought your checkbook to help with the over, overtime fees at the cemetery. Amen. Please keep your remarks to two minutes. Amen two minutes again i'm gonna do it again like i did last night uh kadeem let me hear e flat when you hear e flat it's the indication that it's now time for you to take your seat amen um we're gonna call you in this order amen and unless pastor gives me instruction as he is already texting i don't know if he texting me yeah he texting me Amen. We're going to, in this order, Deaconess Hattie Allen will come for the deaconesses. Trustee Michelle Lawrence will come on behalf of the trustees. Deacon Daryl Sanders will come on behalf of the deacons. Lady Shantika Coffey, my wife, is coming on behalf of the first ladies. Amen. Reverend Pastor Kenneth Clayton will come on behalf of the visiting pastors. And Pastor Jonathan Whitfield will come on behalf of the pastor's crew. And when I receive that text message, I will come back with the furtherance of instructions. You're coming in that order as printed in the program. There's a mic right over here. Amen. I got it, I got it Reverend. Thank you. <laughs> and, the, and the queen of clothes. <laughs> Hattie Allen. Deacon is Hattie Allen. Amen. We're... Amen. Deaconess Herbert. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning, family. Good morning. I am here to bid you greetings on behalf of the Deaconess of Liberty Baptist Church. Pastor, we are here with you. We come to say that we love you, we stand with you, and that God is amazing even in this. So we, we love you, we are here, and we're just grateful to be able to support you, Pastor. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you for your dedication and your love and support through this. We are here for anything that we are able to do. Thank you. to God on a sad but glorious day because God is still good. As I tossed and turned, there are no words to express the pain that each and one of us are feeling, the grief and sorrow that we're going through for our beloved First Lady. So I said, Lord, like, what should I say? What can I say? I opened up my Bible and this is what the Lord gave me. First Peter 5, 10 through 11. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, 
make you perfect, established, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So I say to our forever first lady, others Mika, firsty, bestie, best friend, mom and wife, you have fought a good fight. Your strength and energy is unmatched. Now take your rest in perfect peace in Jesus. There will never, and I mean never, be another first lady that could ever fill her shoes. So I say to my pastor, Marcus, Shanice, Zariah, Liberty, family, friends, and loved ones, it will get better. Thank you. Peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot that has taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. I stand here on behalf of the official deacon board here at the Liberty Baptist Church to let you know, Pastor, that we love you. Marcus, we love you. Shanice, we love you. Zariah, we love you. We loved your mother. She was a gorgeous queen that sat over in that corner there with those high cheekbones and that beautiful smile. We loved her. My wife was crazy about it. She loved my wife's black eyed peas and oxtail. She loved coming down to Simply Southern Cuisine. She loved coming down there. And we're going to miss her. One thing the queen has taught us, she showed us how to suffer in grace. She was a very strong woman. And in spite of her suffering, she looked and she loved her husband. She continued to encourage him and encourage her daughters in spite of her. I told my wife one day, I said, I don't know if I was on my sick bed, how I would react under those circumstances. But I know that there's a God that sits high and looks low. And Pastor, we're here for you because you was here for me. You was here for my mother. You was here for my father. You was here for Brother Spicer. You was here for Brother Herbert. You was here for Brother Champagne. You was here for Brother Sims. You was here for Deacon Allen. You was here for the entire congregation. And one thing that you taught us, there's going to be some times that you, wanna, you don't want to praise God, but press your way. When the Spirit of Heaven has come upon you, when the Spirit of Heaven has come upon you, you have to pull that thing down and give God the praise. Put on a garment of praise and thank God for who he is. God, just be God. Just be God. Just be God. So we thank you. We thank you for her life. And like she, uh, the other lady, uh, Sister Trustee Michelle said, she always will be first lady in our hearts. She always will be. She always will be first lady in our hearts. So we just want to thank the congregation but let Pastor, we're your arms, we're your legs. We're here for you, whatever you need. We're just a phone call away. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. I'm talking to you straight. Whatever you need. We're here for you. You taught us also, Pastor, that there's going to be a long journey back to the new normal. And guess what? I'm still on that journey. I'm still on that journey. It's not easy, but I'm still on that journey. But I know that God, God is real. 
He's real to me. He is real to me. Some people doubt him, but I know all about him. God is real to me. God bless you, and heaven smile upon you. First ladies, I bring you greetings. Pastor, Buster, girls, Marcus, Mama Parker, Shonda, family, Liberty Baptist Church. Shamika was the a great best friend. Tamika was there for me before this walk as the First Lady and during this walk. She told me, never lose my character. Continue to have a voice and just be myself. I'm going to miss our naps. I'm going to miss just coming over, her coming over to my house and we're just sitting down laying on a couch or just in the bed. I'm going to miss my friend, my sister. God bless you all. Thank you. I had to go stand next to my wife. Amen. Amen. That's, that's right. That's Amen. Right. That's right. Thank God for their relationship. Amen. Amen. That she had with Lady Wormley. I'll say this. Um, bishop Edwards is going to come and speak on behalf of the bishops. But one night we was out. Pastor Wormley and the girls was out at the carnival. And our wives was back at the house. Chit-chatting. Talking about us. <laughs> Amen. Again. We thank God for Team Wormley and Team Coffee. Bishop Edwards is coming. Amen. Followed by Pastor Kenneth Clayton. Followed by Pastor Jonathan Whitfield. I feel like going on. I feel like going on. The trials come on every hand I feel like going on I love you my brother this uh, brother and lady Wormley predates the Liberty Baptist Church I bring you greetings from the Unified Free Baptist denomination, your childhood church, from the Roundel Chapel Church, from the St. Mark Church. I'm here, I made it through the snow, came from Mount Vernon, New York, was here last night and tonight, and today I had to be here because Lady Wormley said that I was her bishop. I want to tell you something that really impacted my life when they were with us. Unity, I mean, Liberty Baptist, you have the best of us. When they were with us during our annual session is her birthday. And uh, she made sure that Pastor went to the conference, but on her birthday, he had the polls, as well as myself, to acknowledge her birthday. Let me tell you how big this woman was 
and is. A, few, a month ago, my wife uh, contracted COVID-19. She was in the hospital for 12 days. Didn't know what she gonna make it. In the midst of L Lady Wormley challenges, she picked up the phone and called my wife. I want you to know we have lost something great. But I am sure, Pastor, that you will raise these children. I want to celebrate you, how you have taken care of your family. Your grandfather, Deacon Wormley, Mother Wormley, will be proud of you to see how you have evolved. You are the epitome of a man and a man of God. Let's celebrate this man of God and his lovely mama I love you mommy may the blessing of God on behalf of all the bishops the universal church we stand with you and we really do we don't talk all the time but you know you took care of my dad and I always will be there the Lord bless each one of you thank you Reverend To our worship leader, Pastor Coffey, to Lester, Zariah, Shanice, Marcus, Mrs. Parker, to the entire family. I want to ask all pastors to please stand. All pastors, please stand. Amen. You may be seated. I extend first on behalf of Bishop Timothy Clark love and sympathy. His, the flight was canceled yesterday. He was not able to be here. Then from my mom, I extend to you her love and the invitation for you to return to the kitchen table. Bishop Edwards said that he was Shamika's bishop. I was Shamika's stephusband. <laughs> Sister Parker, I was returned to singleness some years ago. And when I was, Shamika felt sorry for me. Shonda, she just felt bad for me, so she, she wasn't going to leave Lester, but she annexed me to her life. <laughs> Jonathan, she, uh, she and I could talk in other ways. I mean no offense, but I, I find the term, have always found the term first lady superfluous. Shamika was Shamika. And with Lester's permission, she, she was ratchetly righteous. And she didn't like, the, he didn't like the fact that I, I encouraged her ratchetness. Now, I understand you got to be careful to talk about first ladies now because you can get in trouble, black, but she was real. And we would have real conversations. And when we would start, he just rolled his eyes and we kept on going all the more I came by their house I think October I was on my way to a date Natasha and I stopped by there and she said you gonna come to see me before you go see somebody else I said it's not I wanted to see you so she made me stay an hour longer and we were talking about I've been talking about a particular church I won't name the church and when I got to the date the young lady was a member of that church. I said, Shamika jinxed me. I'm come sitting down. I text messages. We see stuff on Facebook. I screenshot it, send it to her. She said, I saw it. And then we put him in a, in a group text. And he said, y'all stop. We wouldn't stop. We kept on going. Two weeks ago, she sent me a text. She said, and whenever she called me, it was always, hey, bae. She texted me and she said, oh, we need to get together. And I said, and I, I put him in that text. I said, no, I'm going to wait a while because this variant is bad. And I've been around 20 people. I'm not going to get you sick. So as soon as it dies down, we'll be together. And we all agreed. I had no idea that I would not have that chance. Let's firmly I celebrate you because you have honored your vows. You have honored your vows. You have no reason to feel 
guilty, you have gone above and beyond. You have raised a standard for what a husband is and does all the way to the end. Shanice Rai Marcus, your mom was a jewel that is not with you, but she'll always be with you. And all of us who love you will always be here for you. I've tried to figure out how to rationalize this, and Vincent, this is the way I, I rationalized it. David and Bathsheba had a baby. The baby was born, but the baby was born sick. And during the sickness, David did what we do. He prayed, he fasted, he cried, he laid before God because he, he hoped that God would hear his cry and heal that son and Cynthia and Jonathan bring the son back to him the way he wanted that son's life would go on and live. The baby died, and the servants were scared to tell David. They said if he acted like that when he was sick, we don't know what he's going to do when he heard the news. And David, from afar off, perceived what had happened. And when he inquired, and they said, yes, yeah, Scott, uh, he did the complete opposite. He went and cleaned and got ready and went to the house of God and worshiped. He gave God praise. And they said, we don't understand. He said, well, I, while, while the, it had not happened yet, I was beseeching God. But God has answered now. The baby cannot come back to us. We can go to him. She can't come back. She don't want to come back. She would not come back. But not soon, but one day, we can go to her. Let's live with righteous wretchedness so that we can see her again. I'm stealing that. Righteous wretchedness. I wonder if I can get away with that in Iowa. <laughs> Amen. God bless y'all beloveds. The see bishop, step husband, I'm not sure what I was. I don't know. I was an eclectic of things, I think. Uh, sometime I felt beloved. Then sometime I just felt battered. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think uh, our last encounter, uh, I was due for a meeting. I was due for a meeting. I was supposed to bring something to her so I guess I was the butler and uh, I, didn't, I didn't get it there so she sent word that there was a conversation needed to be had concerning our love um, God bless you Dr. Wormley, God bless you beloved family God bless you Liberty Baptist Church and let me even add this whole community I, like Bishop, traveled to be here because of connection and um, connection to this beloved family. And not only do I represent the, the crew, because everybody has a crowd as well as a crew of people that are close to your pastor. Uh, we're kind of like James Bond. We got, we're kind of like a little 007 crew. We get together in secret and Shabika was approved of our private gatherings because while we minister and serve, you need to be like Jesus. You need a few folks that can be close to you when you don't feel like being the reverend or the doctor or the pastor. You just want to be yourself. And so I represent that crew that allows your pastor to be Lester without being judged or mistreated or abused, we just let him be the man that he is. And let me add to that, uh, it's not just a New Jersey thing, it's also made its way to Iowa. And there's a crew of brothers who you've got a chance to meet who send their love to you, uh, this beloved church, and of course, your beloved family. I join into all that has been said about my dear sister and about you over this day and a half so many wonderful things and i'm here to say knowing you and thank you for allowing me to close enough to confirm that you have you are and have been everything 
You know, sometimes we come to funerals and we try to make up for what folks were not. But I'm here to confirm everything we've said has been solidly true about this woman of God and about this beloved family. For me, Clayton, she joins the list in holy writ of persons who have used the word nevertheless. Nevertheless. Jesus goes to the garden and asks for a change of trajectory of his existence. And in the midst of that, he says to the Father, nevertheless. You know, life gets hard when you have to live it with somebody else being in control. When somebody else is dictating where you go, when somebody else is dictating uh, how you exist, when somebody else dictates what you eat or what you wear, life gets hard. When you n no longer have choices that you can make, but they're being made for you. And that was our sister's condition choices were taken from her she simply lived these last years obeying what she was told in an existence where she couldn't go where she wanted to go do what she wanted to do she just simply had to obey she was in a position where she had to join the heroes of faith in simply saying nevertheless when i went to the military my entrance took me into a journey that I thought was unreasonable. Got on a plane in Philadelphia, had that same plane landed in St. Louis, Missouri. Stayed there for a minute in that plane, took me to California. Stayed there for a minute, picked up some poor folks, then the plane took a sharp turn right. We went north to Alaska, stopped there. Then it took a sharp left turn and went across the Pacific Ocean, landed me in uh, Tokyo, Japan on my journey on the way to Okinawa, Japan, which was south. Thinking about that trip, I was saying it would have been just simpler if I could have just got on the plane in Philly and went straight to Okinawa, Japan. That straight flight would have took maybe about 18 hours. Instead, it took me about 36. Take all those twists and turn. But I had to come to a conclusion, Deacon Sanders, that if I had to take the trip, I need to realize the conditions of the journey. And on the conditions of the journey, I had to realize the first thing. First of all, somebody else paid for the ticket. And if somebody else could pay for my ticket, I had to trust that if they pay for my journey, they'd make sure I get where I was supposed to get to. Beloved, that's our sister's condition. In her nevertheless scenario, in her faith journey, she had to realize that if heaven was her destination, she could be glad that somebody else paid for the ticket. And even if the journey had to take her through sickness, had to take her through pain, even had to take her through the issues of a body that was deteriorating while she leaves, she had to trust that if this was my journey, it's all right because he's already paid for where I'm going. And if he's already paid for where I'm going, he trusted that he's going to get me there. So if I got to cry every day, it's okay. I'm going to get there. If I got to be confused, I'm going to get there. So I don't know if this was her song, but this is surely in the testimony. Some glad morning when this life is over. I will fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I will fly away. The second verse is even greater than the first verse. Just a few more. Weary days and then I will fly away. The chorus said, I will fly away. Oh, glory, I will fly away when I die. Can I say it like Shamika? Hallelujah. Bye-bye. I will fly away. She's gone now, but can't you see a shouting up there? Can't you see a glorifying the Lord up there? Come on, celebrate a, a woman who taught us how to live in the nevertheless. God bless you, my brother. God bless your family. God bless your church.
Y'all say there's something about that name, yeah. Hey, there's something about that name, yeah. Hey, there's something about that name. about that name. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God again for the music ministry. Amen. Listen, we're moving on a fast train now. Amen. This is going to be moved express. Amen. As we prepare for the word of the Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a family tribute. Amen. Mom is getting ready to come. Miss Juanita Parker. Amen. And sister Shunda. Amen. Williams. Did I say that right? I want to make sure I said it right. Amen. Amen. Let's receive mom and sister at this time. Miss Juanita uh, Parker. Amen. And first lady. Amen. Shunda Williams. Amen. Come on. They need your strength too. Hallelujah. morning church God got us God's got us okay I would bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth liberty you all lost a first lady I lost my baby 
and it hurts so bad. But I know God is going to, I know he's going to fix it. After a while, I'm going to see you again. It's okay. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. My Mika, my baby, the love of my life, my daughters. <laughs> what a joy to be around Shamika. If I have to use one word to describe her, it would simply be unique. She is such a unique young lady. Always have been. I'm going to share a few things with you and I'm going to take my seat. <laughs> she was so smart, so brilliant. This one here would say, she can make an A and not study. I can study hard and just get a C. <laughs> but I taught Shamika, both my girls, at an early age that they should make up their beds when they get up. You know us old folks, we like that. We want, want you to make the bed. So Shamika said to me, Ma, why should I make the bed? I got to get right back in it. <laughs> I said, well, baby, you make the bed because if the bed is made, the whole room looks neat. You could clean up the whole room and don't make the bed and the room doesn't look neat. Another thing was a lot of people showed a lot of love to my, both my kids, but Shamika used to always end up visiting with someone or going out with everyone wanted a part of that little girl. They'd take her out places. So I said to her, Shamika, if ever you are out and you're spending the night somewhere and you don't have a change of clothes, just take your underwear and wash them out. She said, Ma, can't I just turn them on the other side? <laughs> These are her words. I'm not making that sneaker, right? And the last thing is, we were at church on a first Sunday, and I was going to take her out for dinner after communion. So communion was over, and I said, come on, Mika, we're going to get ready <laughs> go out for dinner she looked at me she said ma I'm not hungry now I had that cracker and juice <laughs> but my baby my baby oh my god lastly Shamika no I hate the the phrase or slang it is what it is so because she know I don't care that much about it she use it all the time to me so I was out shopping uh, just before Thanksgiving and I saw this shirt and it had this, it is what it is, friend, I got it for. And it was the very last gift I gave my baby. And that happened this past Thanksgiving. The Lord blessed us all to get together at my house. And my baby ate and she was like, mommy, can I have some more? She said, this food tastes so good. And I was afraid she was going to eat herself sick because she was just eating. So, so Shamika, Mommy, love you. And we're going to stay in touch, okay, baby? You know why? Because it is what it is. Okay. Amen. I honor the Lord. I honor my brother. I honor you, Liberty. I want to say thank you. Thank you, Lester, for taking such good care of my sister. Marcus, Shanice, Zariah, I love you all. Lester, I love you. I don't have to say I'm going to be here because we're just family. We're here. I have a lot to say, but I'm not going to say it because most of you already know how my sister was. My sister called me sissy. She called me sissy and she would call me her bestie. And she made sure that I knew that because her husband was a pastor first, that she was the senior first lady. 
And listen, she encouraged me in my walk. And she would tell me, be Shonda, just be you. Just be you, because them church folk going to be there, and they're going to be gone, so you be you, you know. And she would say with her, <laughs> what you say? Her, her ratchet holiness, ratchet righteous. That is a good phrase for my You knew her. That was my sister. But I'll say this, and I, I, I could say, I could talk about our childhood. I'm 10 years older than my sister. We were in the same book, just different chapters. But if my sister could get up for two minutes... If she could get up for two minutes, she never complained. Shamika didn't complain. What she did was say, I don't like dialysis. I don't like, that's not a complaint. That's just, I don't like this. She didn't complain. If she could get up, Shamika would walk around and she would say, mm, y'all did me right. Lester, you, you did this. You did that, Lester. My sister would say, she would say, First Lady, she, you got my name on my casket? Y'all know my sister. She would say, Smith, y'all did me right. You laid my sister out like a queen. This man took care of my sister. He took care of his children and he never complained. He did what he had to do. He laid his grandfather to rest. He laid his grandmother to rest. He did what he had to do. And I thank God for the man that you are and what you have done. You have been a blessing to the family. You have been an encouragement. He has encouraged me. He has encouraged me. Lester, I love you with the love of the Lord. You are my brother forever. You will always be my brother. Liberty, you are my family. I thank you for how you treated Firsty. What a name, Firsty. I said, Shamika, who going to call you Firsty? She said, they look Firsty. I'm their Firsty. She loved Liberty. And I thank you all for the way you loved on my sister. Pastors, clergy folk, family, to God be the glory for the things that he has done in her life. She fought a good fight. She fought a good fight. And she is not suffering anymore. And to that I say, thank you, Lord. God bless you all. To God be the glory. We are honored today, even in the snow, God has blessed us to rise. We give God honor and glory. We honor the angel of this house, even today, in the form of Pastor Lester W. Warmly. We honor the bishop to the greatest presider of all years, Dr. Coffey. Let's give him a hand. He's just been extra. To Dr. Whitfield. To my good friend that I've known from a baby, Dr. Daryl Clayton, God bless you to all the ministers. This is a five-minute express that you're getting on today. Lo, all my years, I've known First Lady for 11 years. She's been the distinguished First Lady of this branch of Zion. This is my first time that I don't call her that in the form of a resolution. But we thank God, Pastor, because you've been above and beyond. You have nurtured us, even through the sickness. We never went without Bible study. We never went without a Sunday morning. When my daughter was international, you prayed. Church, let me tell you, First Lady was in an international prayer group all around the world, wherever my daughter was. First Lady Shamika Woman was there, and my daughter would message Pastor and let her know that even in different languages, they said to us last night, if you don't have love, you don't have nothing. Love is the glue, baby, not crazy glue. Love is the glue. I want to first do this quickly. 
I have a resolution from our church. I need to tell you there are 30 resolutions over there that I'm not reading because we are on an express. Pastor's going to preach. So in his time, he's going to read them all and thank each one of you for what you've done. But on behalf of the Swag Ministry of the Great Liberty Church, the junior and senior ushers, I have to say thank you to my ambassadors, to the nurses. God bless you all. But this takes 60 seconds to say thank you to the Smith Funeral Home. Yes. T, thanks for taking care of Team Warmly. H, thanks for making our heart a little easier. A, for every phone call, you were always there. And we're never going to forget your kindness. K, K, you taught us the real meaning of kindness. You, there's only one Smith Funeral Home. All, only believe in God. He'll do the rest. And under the banner of Jesus the Christ, you stand. Mr. Sean, if nobody else has ever told you, First Lady is going to see Jesus. And them red bottoms ain't go water down, baby, because they real. You know, Pastor, you told us about the boots. One was red and one didn't have no color because they had put polish on that. All right, Liberty, stand up. <laughs> Come on, y'all. We on Express. Come on. Reverend Rouse, don't laugh like that. You know some people do that. <laughs> Our pastor told us that. We didn't know anything about it. The lady put up two boots and only one was red. You know, Brother Clayton, one had to be paint. Resolution, Lady Shabika Wormley. To our pastor, to her children, Zariah, Shanice, and Marcus, you know we love you. I love First Lady, and First Lady loved me. And because of that, she'll always have a place in my heart and in the heart of the Blaylock team. And as my daughter is watching live stream today in San Diego, California, Mommy wants you to know I love you for the support you give me and for being there for your mama. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, internal in the heavens, 2 Corinthians 5 and 1. On the occasion of the passing of Lady Shamika Warmly, beloved First Lady of the Liberty Baptist Church, we, the officers and members, deem it proper to enter into record words of commendation and comfort to the family of this brave soldier of Jesus Christ. Whereas God has seen fit to call from labor to reward, Lady Shamika Warmly, beloved wife of Reverend Dr. Lester W. Warmly, and loving mother of Marcus, Shanice, and Zariah, the first family of the Liberty Baptist Church, we bow in humble submission to the will of God who does all things well. The Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Job 121. Whereas Lady Shamika was a faithful and active member of the praise team, the choir, swag youth ministry, and the marriage ministry, operating in any capacity needed until her health failed her. Whereas Lady Shamika Warmly's influence reached beyond the walls of LBC, positively impacting the greater community in and outside of the church with her outgoing personality, wonderful sense of humor, and we all know First Lady had a beautiful smile. Whereas Lady Shamika exemplified an unwavering faith in Jesus Christ. In her daily life, her praise whenever she was able to come to church and using many opportunities to encourage others to trust Jesus in spite of the great pain she endured. Resolved that we, the Liberty Baptist Church, celebrate our First Lady's promotion from earthly suffering to heavenly peace. Resolved that First Lady's testimony is I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's later for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord, the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Resolved that we commend our pastor, Reverend Dr. Lester W. Warmly, Marcus, Shanice, and Zariah as well as the entire family to the care of our loving God. 
who promises that weeping endures for a night. But joy, let's say joy. Joy comes in the morning. Resolve that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy remain in the archives of the Liberty Baptist Church. Please know that our love, prayers, and support are with you. May the comfort of the Lord be with you always. Humbly submitted this 29th day of January in the year of our Lord, 2022. Deacon Darrell Sanders, Chairman of the Deacon's Ministry. Trustee Michelle Lawrence, Chairperson of the Trustees Ministry. Reverend Dr. Lester Wormley is our Senior Pastor. And again, I say thank you. And to our pastor and family, we love you dearly. Standing all over this room. Standing. Standing. For 20 plus years, Lady Wormley has been with Reverend Dr. Lester Wormley. He was not always Dr. Wormley. But for 20 years, they have shared life and love. Out of those 20 years, Lester became her pastor. He's coming today as a grieving husband, but yet as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's give him strength. Let's give him encouragement as he comes to stand behind this sacred desk to share a word of the Lord on behalf of his wife, Lady Shamika Wormley. Let's receive at this time the pastor of the Liberty Baptist Church, the father of these children, the Reverend Dr. Lester Wormley. Look, come on, people of God. He needs it right now. He needs it right now. He's getting ready to speak well of. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. It's my wife's favorite song. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This little guy. Oh, I'm gonna let you shine. Come on, don't you go to church. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let you shine. This little light. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. She say, all in my neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, all in my neighborhood. Come on, Baptist Church. I'm going to let it shine. Yeah, all in my neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. You know why I do it? Oh, Jesus gave me this little light, and I'm going to let it shine. Oh, Jesus gave me this little light, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, Jesus gave me this little light, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Are we done? Come on, put your back to it. This little light, this little light of mine, oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, yeah, I'm gonna let it shine. Sing it, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, yeah, let it shine, yeah, let it shine, let it shine. We late, we late taking off, but I'll make up the time in the air, Sean. 
to God be the glory for the things he has done. And I am not unmoved by what is happening today. In fact, I may be more moved than everybody in this room about what's happening today. Because all of you get to go home to whoever you left home with. I got to go home without my wife. For the first time in 20 years, my life has been dramatically shifted. And yet, though he slay me, Yet will I trust him for all the days of my appointed time. I'll wait until my change comes. There are too many people to acknowledge and thank today, and so I won't even try. Um, but I will acknowledge um, this uh, officiant, this presider, this moderator, this pastor, my friend, my brother, Reverend Andre L. Coffey. Let's give God praise for him. He did a masterful job navigating us these past two days. And uh, I, am, I am glad um, that he was able to do it. Shamika loved you, and you already know that. Um, and we talked about some things. And so, um, as I shared with you last night, um, I'm in this strange liminal space the space in between where I knew I'd be and where I never thought I'd be I'm at both places right now I knew we were headed here because my wife told me so she said something I'm going to deal with in this preach word in the next eight minutes I'm going to do that um, I want to um, just thank God for his strength. I have nothing left. I am depleted and empty. I am broken and hurting. But his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Therefore, I glory even in this, I glory in it, that the power of Christ may rest upon me, that when I am weak, then am I strong. I honor the offspring of my wife's body, and the greatest gifts that she has ever given to me in Marcus, Shanice, and Zariah. You were the joys of her life. And the good thing is, they're not hearing that for the first time today. Their mommy showed them love the whole time. And they knew that they were loved. And they know they're still loved. And daddy will never insult mommy by saying, I'm going to be mommy and daddy. But I'm going to be the best doggone daddy I can be. And no one will ever take your mother's place. Nobody. Shanice said, I know that's right. Long as you know. So, <laughs> I'm thankful um, for all of you, just uh, this outpouring of love is overwhelming to me um, because we're so used, Shamika and I, to doing for others and not having stuff done for us. We're fine with that. Um, my whole 11, nearly 12 years here, the eternal fight has been, Pastor, let us do something for you. But Jesus said, I did not come to be served. I came to serve. And that's, what I, that's how we have lived our lives. And um, when you have nothing but each other, 
you ain't got to worry about whatever what other people do because uh, we all we had was each other. And so, um, I, I I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do now. I am I'm lost in the living, but I'm not lost in the preaching. And so I will do what she wanted me to do, and what God created me to do. There are many texts that could be used to describe and define her life today, but the one that encapsulates her life most uh, succinctly is that found in the second letter of Paul to Timothy, um, fourth chapter, round about verse number six, that says, for I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge shall give me at that day, but not only to me, but to all of them who love his appearing. I want to talk to you for a few moments from the subject, I'm going upstairs. Now, Father, I thank you for your strength. I thank you for your choosing of me. I have never been, neither am I now, worthy of your choice, but I am grateful that you have chosen a worm like me. Thank you, Jesus, to give me the privilege and honor to thank you for the rib that you have given me. I pray now in the strong name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will strengthen me now not only to comfort my children not only to celebrate Shamika but also to praise you because you made it all possible now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight for Lord you alone are my strength and my redeemer help me to preach this word right in Jesus name amen I'm going upstairs. For those of you who don't know Shamika, Shamika, uh, she uh, loved people till she didn't. She loved company till she didn't. Uh, she liked being around you till she didn't. And when she didn't, she didn't uh, explain to you that she didn't. She would simply get up, gather her things, and tell us, announce to us in the living room, I'm going up. See, some of y'all, if you know, you know. I'm, I'm going upstairs. It didn't matter what was happening. She said, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going upstairs. We could be in the middle of watching something, and while it was on and the best part was getting ready to come on, I'm going upstairs. We talking, we telling jokes. Yeah, that's nice. I'm going upstairs. She was saying to us that no matter what is happening, I have had enough. And I choose now to withdraw myself. Not because um, I'm completed with the task, but because I'm just finished. And so um, she lived that reality that she did not ever make apologies or prepare us for when she would go upstairs. When I, when I was ready to go upstairs, you would see me shifting gears. You would hear. And then I would say, well, you know, I'm getting tired. I'm getting sleepy. Let me. Shamika didn't do that. She, you weren't going to catch her slipping. You ain't going to see me sleep. No, because, you know, you got people you know, who like to catch you slipping when you're sleeping, especially here at this, this here Liberty Church. You got folks that live for the sleep pick and post it. I'm going to just look at the clock. So, and so she, um, what I did not know, I didn't realize, Scott, was that she was preparing 
us all for today because she did not announce she just left. And so uh, uh, the only person who understood why it was time for her to go upstairs was her. We would sit and wonder, is she sleepy? Is she tired? Is she in pain? Is she bored? Are we too loud? A lot of times all those things were true. Um, but we never knew, Pastor Doug, which one it was. But she knew why it was time for her to go upstairs. And so I thought, um, how could I uh, explain um, today. And so Paul tapped me on my shoulder and said, Lester, let me tell you what happened. Um, she got to um, the end of this journey here and she, like me, she began to ponder her imminent and inevitable death. But before she could go forward, she had to take a moment in the present and look back. Let me say it again. Before she went forward, she took a moment in the present and she looked back. Paul now says the same thing. When Paul was ready to go upstairs, he says, the time for my departure is at hand. I'm getting ready. He didn't say I'm going. He said, I'm getting ready. I'm thinking about it. But how do you know it's time to go upstairs? So here comes the look back. Why is it that you're ready to go upstairs? Well, because I fought a good fight. Nobody fought harder than Shamika, and she fought everything that she didn't like. She fought lupus. She fought kidney failure. She fought Lester. She fought being made a first lady when all she wanted to be was Lester's wife. She loved being y'all thirsty. But if she had to choose between y'all and me, she'd choose me every time. But she fought with grace. Shemika fought, and she fought in a way that you couldn't even see she was fighting. She would gather herself. She would fight to look like she was okay when she wasn't okay. She fought to present herself as strong when she was weak. She fought to keep those lips shiny when her mouth went dry. She said, Where is my Vaseline? If you know, you know. She fought a good fight. Doctors told her, uh, Shamika, um, you need to go to dialysis three times a week, four hours a day. She said, I don't like that. And so she went when she wanted to. And I would say to her, you got to go to dialysis. She says, I ain't got to do nothing. I said, you going to go if I take you? She said, how you going to take me if I ain't going to go? She fought and she said, I'm not going today. Because I choose now. Not to fight with dialysis, I'll just fight with time. She understood that every time she skipped dialysis, it shortened her time. But she said, that's okay, because since I know that my time is going to be limited, I'm going to pour it into my children. I'm going to share with them what they need to hear. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. We wanted her to keep going, but she, she thought, she looked at her checklist. Have I been a good wife? Check. Have I been a good mother? Check. Have I been a good first lady? Check. Have I been a good daughter? Check. Have I been a good sister? Check. Have I been a good friend? Check. Well, I finished whatever he put me here for. I finished my course. And, and one thing I used to get mad at my wife about because I used to say to her, you don't ever finish what you start. She said, I don't finish like you want me to finish, but I'm finished when I'm finished. She finished her course, but most of all, my brothers and sisters, she kept the faith. 
that even when it got down to the end and her body began to decay and began to fail her, um, when I was getting upset and praying that God would step in, um, she said, I'm going to let God do what God does. So when dialysis got there and it was ending, she said to me one day in the bed, she says, I just need God to do something. I shared with the Liberty Church that she said, I need God to do something. I said, don't say that because um, the Lord may decide um, to take you. She said, I know what I'm saying. I need God to do something. I need him to either raise me up or take me up, but I need God to do something. Please don't miss it. That Shamika Wormley died with lupus. She died with kidney failure, but she did not die from lupus. She did not die from kidney failure. She died because her faith said, I'm finished. I'm done. She said that I've worked long enough down here. Come on, Tonto. Let's ride. She said, I've worked enough down here. I've been first lady long enough down here. I've served my husband long enough down here. I wish I could be there to see my children grow up, but I've put them in good hands. And so I finished my course. I've kept the faith and I realized that my life is in the master's hands. I realized that my life is not in the doctor's hands, but my life is in God's hands. And so she kept the faith. And because she looked at a checklist and she said, my fight is done, check. Finish my course, check. Kept the faith, check. She said to everybody, now I'm ready to go upstairs. I've been down here long enough. Thank you for the red bottles, baby. But I got some more slippers that I'm ready to put on on the other side. Thank you for the beautiful dress, honey. But I got a robe that I'm going to put on on the other side. Thank you for putting me in a house. But I'm grateful that I got a mansion in the sky. Because Jesus said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And so when she said, I'm ready to go upstairs, the father heard a prayer and he came down and got her. The story is told of a father who had a bunch of children. They were watching TV in the living room. And while they were watching TV, it got later and later. And one by one, the children fell asleep. When each child fell asleep, the father picked up the child and took the child upstairs. One by one, as they fell into sleep, he picked them up, held them in his arms, and they went upstairs. Well, that's the same thing that happened with us. Uncle Walter fell asleep and God took him upstairs. Me, my fell asleep. God took her upstairs. Kent fell asleep and he took him upstairs. And then two weeks ago, Mika fell asleep and she went upstairs. But that's not the end of the story. On the next morning, even though they fell asleep at different times, the father stood at the top of the stairs and he made one call. And when he called one time, all the children rose up at the voice of the father. So go ahead, go upstairs, go to sleep. But on that great getting up morning, he's going to speak. Uncle Walter will get up. He's going to speak. Kent will get up. He's going to speak. Me, my will get up. He's going to speak. Mika will get up. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air. I'm so glad, so glad that she's going upstairs and when she gets there she won't be looking for me ma she won't be looking for ken she won't be looking for uncle walter she won't even be looking for me she'll pass by every 
anybody and she'll say, why? I need to see Jesus. Because when I see Jesus, amen. When I see my Savior, amen. All of my troubles, all of my heartaches, all of my suffering will be over. When I, yeah, see Jesus, it'll be worth it. When I see Jesus, trouble's over. When I, when I, when I see the man who died for me, when I see the man who set me free, I'm going, yeah, I'm going. May be seated. Real quickly, we want to thank all of the pastors, bishops, apostles, elders, potentate. Want to thank the Liberty Baptist Church for wrapping your arms around your pastor. Wait, before he finishes, I want to thank the Smith Funeral Home. I paid for a lot of stuff, but I got even more stuff than I paid for. And this man, this man, this brother, at 2.30 in the morning, went and picked up my wife because I said I did not want her to spend the night in the morgue. He went to the hospital at 2.30 in the morning and said, I got her. She's good. He took care of her. He took care of my family and anything I wanted and half the stuff I didn't, he got it here to make sure that she had the celebration of a queen. I'm thankful for the personal relationship and love of the Nesbitt Funeral Home, of the Perry Funeral Home. I love them. But the professional services of Sean Harvell and the Smith Funeral Home is unmatched. And I want to publicly, y'all get up and salute my friend. Thank you, Sean. You the oldest and the coldest. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Give us direction. At this time, what we're going to do is um, we're going to call for the ushers. And also, we probably will need some of the uh, deacons to handle the flowers because they are quite heavy. Um, we're going to ask that you will come at this time. Those of you who are journeying with us to the cemetery, we're going to ask that you, once we have had the recessional, you go directly to your cars because I have to get you to the cemetery in a short span of time and the weather is not working with us today. So we're gonna ask that you all would just please bear with us again. We're gonna ask you to continue to pray for this family because it is your, your prayers that will carry them through. What pastor did not tell you is that the arrangements took all of 15 minutes because if you know him, he sat down, he said, I'm gonna make this very simple. If you know, you know. He chose the color, and he says, you know what to do. And that was it. He took care of his wife while she was here, and he was going to make sure he took care of her doing this part too. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to call for the ushers. I'm going to have some of our deacons here to help us with the flowers. 
please just bear with us as we try to get to the cemetery as expeditiously as possible. Let us all rise. The choir will give us a selection as we are on our way out. Thank you. Hallelujah, amen. Y'all, I'm walking up the King's Highway. Oh, I'm on my way to heaven. 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 Oh, hallelujah, amen. Oh, I am walking up the King's Highway. I'm on my way to heaven. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, y'all, I'm walking up the key. Oh, it's a highway to hell. Oh, y'all, none can walk up there. It's a highway to heaven. Oh, y'all are walking up the King's Highway. Yes, I'm on my way to heaven. So am I. I'm on my way to heaven. So am I. I'm on my way to heaven. So am I. I'm on my way to heaven. So am I. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, y'all are walking up the King's Highway. Yeah.
one can walk up there. Walking up, 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 walking up